I think. So we we'll then start the presentation. Today we're looking at pacemaker programming. Uh, yes, that's basically what we are doing today. So the slides for the EP itself, invasive EP, is not yet ready. But we can do the pacemaker on today. So um, we all know the conducting fibers of the heart, the SA node, the AV node, the East bundle, um, the right and the Purkinje fibers. Um, I don't know if you can see my arrow. I will try to be using this same slide to explain some things we do in EP. And the reason for that is so that when we come to EP fully, we can easily move fast and grab what is being done. So in the EP lab, what they do is that most of the time they come through the femoral vein when they pass their catheter. It's just like you are accumulating for coronary angiogram. In the coronary angiogram, you use the artery, rather, but for electrophysiology, invasive electrophysiology, you use the vein. So that means you come through the femoral vein from beneath, or pass through the external iliac, common iliac vein, then you join the IVC, inferior vena cava. So we all know that the IVC leads to the right atrium. So that's what my hair is just showing, the IVC leads to the right atrium. And then, so you connect your catheters to different segments in the atrium. So the name, depending on the number of catheters you want to use. When, when we come to the EP lectures, you will see the nature of the catheters, but I want to just use this image to explain some things. Um, so some one of the catheters can be in the atrium, which can be either the upper part, the proximal atrium or the distal part of the atrium. And that catheter can be in the triangle of cock, which contains the AV node. Then another catheter can be in on directly on the east bundle. And that catheter can be passed through the apex, which can be depending on the number of segments of that catheter, which as I said, we see in the EP during that time. The number of segments will determine proximal. Um, RV, distal RV, or proximal mid and distal RV. Another catheter can be in the RVOT. Then another catheter can be in the coronary sinus. So for the coronary sinus, basically what you want to actually determine is the wave between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Because the cosine sign was once in the AV atrioventricular groove. So that means it's going to be behind this left. You know, this is the left atrium now. So it's going to be behind. So in the groove. So that means it's serving as impulse. It's trying to recognize the wave or impulses generated between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Sometimes you can puncture the entire tracheal septum and go straight past your catheter to the left atrium. So in, in cases where you want to do ablation or isolate the pulmonary veins, especially in patients with atrial fibrillation, where you isolate the pulmonary veins because that's a common site for atrial fibrillation. To access it, you puncture the left, the entire atrial septum from the right atrium and access the left atrium. So please, at any time, if you are not um, understanding or I'm moving too fast. Please, can you let me know? The aim is just for us to be on the same page in, for our practice and for the exams. So, um, so as I said, access into the atrium is through the inferior vena cava for all the catheters. So you can pass as much, as many as four or five catheters through the IVC. They all pass through the IVC. 
and there will be places that this different segment of what I've described in the atrium, different segment in the atrium, around the east bundle, in the apex, in the coronary sinus, so you get access to the left atrium. That's how the catheters are passed. So you can make multiple punctures in the femoral vein, four or five punctures, it doesn't matter, as long as it's a vein, and then um, pass different catheters through. Okay, so one important thing in the EP class will be to determine the, you will see some um, abbreviations, AH, HV, SNRT. I think there was a time Dr. Dudiemi asked, what's the meaning of SNRT? That means sinus node recovery time. All those ones will take in the EP class, but let me just quickly briefly explain what they mean. So technically, all those catheters. Um, sorry, Dr. Tony, I hope I'm still audible. I want to be sure. You're very audible. I can hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. So um, the catheters, when they're in the atrium or in the ventricle or whatever they are located in, Apart from them using them to determine or recognize electrical currents and the transmission of waves, you can also use that same catheter to serve like a pacemaker stimulus to stimulate that segment. So meaning that if I put a catheter in the right atrium, either in the proximal or close to the SA node, apart from it recognizing the SA node, um, electrical activity generated by the SA node. I can also use that same catheter to stimulate the SA node. So the same way, if I put the catheter on the AV node or put it on the ease or whatever segment, I can use that same catheter to identify or sense electrical activity and also use that same catheter to pace. So that's the function of that catheter. So it does, so that brings to for the definition of what those words mean. SCL, the sinus um, node, um, sinus cyclolens, sinus cyclolens. So sinus cyclolens simply means that if I put a catheter in the right atrium and I stimulate the right atrium by pacing it myself, not waiting for SA node function and I pace it, it's going to transmit electrical activity to the AV node and other segments of the heart, other conducting fibers. Then, I pace it again. Then I wait for another electrical cardiac cycle to occur. I pace it again. So the time interval between the first pacing of my catheter in the atrium to the next time I pace it again. You know, I paced it the first time, electrical activity was passed down to the ventricles. I pace it the second time, electrical activity was passed down to the ventricles. I pace it the third time, electrical activity. Sorry? Hello? Hello? Have I disconnected? Dr. Tony? No. Oh, no, you are no, we can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, in that MCQ question um, that we, doc I think the segment Dr. Tony, I mean, um, discussed. What it simply was saying is that um, just one minute, let me try to mix some things together so that we can actually follow. Um, just one minute, let me pull up a slide. Sorry, just one second. Fantastic. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, just one second. Sorry, one minute. Okay. So, is my slide showing? 
هلا لقطتني ايش شايل معي لقطتني يس اوكي ثانك يو سيم داجرام يا سيم داجرام يا ام جوينج تو تشينج داجرام ناو فيرست بي وونت تو جيت سمثينج فاست ذات as i said the catheter can mean the atrium i can piss from the atrium hello um okay um so i can piss from the atrium and it will generate like electrical activity down the ventricle okay so i'll show you what i mean in the next slide now in this or that's okay so in this slide Okay. Sorry. Sorry, my slide is showing, right? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Thank you. So, as I said, the EP catheters, these are how they look like. You can see how they look like. They are not just like um, catheters, like the coronary catheters that we looked at the same, at different time, but they don't have to of JL, JR, GTL. They can be straight, but you can also curve them. You can manipulate them. So they can you, they can be as straight as this, and you can twist them, and you can bend them. There's a way you can, at the, at the tail end of the catheter, there is a, a, a kind of knob that you can be turning, and it can be turning the direction of, you want to bend it like this, or, less bend no matter the degree of bend you want you can turn it with the knob at the back now i want you to take note of the the white dots eh, on the catheter so those white dots are the segments that senses and paste the different segments you can use to sense and paste so those segments depending on the number of segments so some can be um four quadri polar some can be two bipolar two segments some can be four segments some can be eight segments octapolar some can be 10 segments decapolar so different number of segments depending on what you want to do and how many segments you want to use we'll still come to you but i'm just trying to use this to explain something so remember i said that they can all pass through the ivc Right, Dr. Tony, I'm, am I still audible? Yeah, you are. I can hear you very oh, well. Thank you, sir. So I, can, I said they can, you can pass no matter even up to five, six catheters through the IVC, and they will all be in this different segment of the heart. So, for example, this upper one, which they call HR, is in the right atrium. Mm, I right atrium, okay. Um, this one is going into the RVOT. Oh, sorry, this one is touching the east bundle. Sorry. This one is touching the east bundle. This one is going into the right ventricle. So as I said, the catheter two can go into the RVOT, it can go into the coronary sinus. So those are how you put the catheter. And I said, the function of the catheter is first to sense electrical activity in that area. And you can also use that same segment to pass that same area. So you can see for this east bundle area now, East bundle catheter now is over the AV node over the east bundle. So it can sex electrical activity at the AV node area and the east bundle area. It's the same thing for the one in the right ventricle. Okay. Now, so also the one for the atrium. It can be as close to the SA node as, as you want. So different segments can be placed, placed in it. Now, I remember I said that. Um, Apart from each sensing, you can use it with pace. So let's say I started pacing from the atrium. It should generate activity, electrical activity to the AV node, to the e, to the east bundle, to the right and left bundle, and to the ventricle. Right? Now, after the that electrical activity wears off, then I it paces again. I pace again. I can have, I can time the number of pacing. Um, I can time the pacing. So it pace again then it, the same cycle occurs. Then it pays again, the same cycle occurs. So what we, so the, this, the time interval between the first time I paste to the next time I paste is called this 
cycle length um, SCL, um, cycle, um, sinus cycle length, the sinus cycle length, SCL. Okay? The time interval between the first time I paste to the next time I paste. Just remember that be between that time interval, the pacing will have generated down to, that generated will have transmitted down to the AV node and to the other segment before the next pacing. So that time interval is the SCL. That's one definition. Number two okay. definition. And yeah. this is that Dr. Dudu Yemi's hand is up. I don't know whether she wants to ask questions. Okay, okay. yeah, she can please ask her. Since I'm not seeing the participants, so I might not know. Okay, sorry. Yes. Yes. My question is, I understand what you said about the sinus cycle length. So, so I, the operator can determine how long that wants to be. By mm -hmm. the time you pace and then um, you allow the cycle to go around and uh, can you still wait a while and say, okay, let me wait more time to replace if I want to. Or by itself, it will regenerate, it will re I mean, automatically restart the whole cycle again. Or is the operator that determines, okay, I want to pace now, even before he ends this cycle, I want to pace again? Or what determines that? Thank you. Thank or can you. I determine it? Great question. Thank you so much. So number one is that you are the one that will determine the time. That's number one. Okay. And that will differentiate the definition from sinus node recovery time. I will explain the sinus node recovery time. But for the cycle, SCL, sinus cycle length, you are the one that will determine that duration. And one pacing at also interval, you determine it. And even before the pace, the electrical activity gets to the terminal end, you can actually generate another atria premature complex. Okay. You can generate it, meaning that you didn't wait for the cycle length to finish before pacing again. All in the end to generate a, a premature complex to initiate an arrhythmia. Remember mm -hmm. what they are trying to do in the, in the cat lab is to trigger an arrhythmia. So a patient has AVRT, AVNRT, they won't always be in AVNRT. They can be in the sinus, yeah. Abby, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what you want to do is that, are you dealing with AVNRT? Are you dealing with AVRT? Are you dealing with another form of bypass track? The only way you will know is to initiate that Shake it. So whatever it will yeah, do yeah, to, to generate that arrhythmia is what you should do. Okay. And that's why when you start the cycle SCL time and you're not generating your arrhythmia, you increase the frequency faster. <laughs> that's how it is done. And the more you increase the frequency, it can even get to a time that the patient can just go into VT. I've seen it many times. I will clearly shock the patient out of VT. Huh. And to the extent that when your patient is not achieving what you want, you can even do pharmacological pacing too. You put the patient on adrenaline or no adrenaline to increase the heart rate or isoprenaline. Okay. That's another thing you can do. All the aim is induce this arrhythmia so that I can see the pattern of the arrhythmia on the okay. and be able to determine if it's AVRT, AVNRT, or any okay. other form of arrhythmia. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so you can see that the definition is based on the operator. Yeah, Dr. Dwayne, I hope we're able to ask our question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. So now, so that definition. So if you have any question, please ask me. I can't see the participants. So as we continue. Okay. So that once I see anybody hand mm -hmm. raised, I will inform you. Sir. Okay, thank you, Chief. So that differentiates this from sinus recovery time, sinus node recovery time. Now, when I pace, as I said, the electrical activity can generate down to the ventricle and all that. I can replace again and the same thing happen. Then I can actually wait for, as Dr. DDM said, can you wait? Yes, I can wait for the normal SA node activity to be occur by itself without pacing. That means I just waited for the patient's intrinsic reading. So the time interval between my last pacing of around the atrium or the SA node 
to the time the patient's own intrinsic SA node activity picked up is the sinus node recovery time. So I'm sure Dr. Jim can get back to that question in um, one word and be able to see what that definition means. At least it will be clearer now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. I, I, I get the is clear. With the time, yes, the last, from the time you faced the last time until the time you waited for the patient's intrinsic SMO to recover. No. Okay. Time not snow recovery time. Okay. okay, I think that one is. So we can move on. The next definition we should know is the AH, AH interval. AH interval simply defines the time interval between electrical activity generated from the atrium, anywhere, of, anywhere from the atrium, either from the SNO or from any segment of the atrium, to the time it gets to the AV node. The time from the atrium to the AV node is defined as the AH interval. Okay? So that helps you explain your AV nodal delay. Now, the time between when the impulse is generated from the AV node to the Purkinje's, that means to have caused ventricular contraction, but the ventricular depolarization is called HV. I hope it's clear. AH is the time interval between the atrium and AV node, impulse getting to the AV node. And the time between when the impulse got to the AV node and to ventricular depolarization is called HV. So that means H means is, V means ventricle. So the time interval between the east bundle and the ventricle is HV. A -V -A -A -H the time interval between the atrium and the east. I, I hope it's straightforward. Mm. Yes, sir, it's clear, sir. Now, so the reason why I'm saying all that is that you need those time intervals to determine your aberrancy. Very important. You need those time intervals. The SNO recovery time, you need the age recovery, age interval, the HV interval to determine your that's why I'm taking enough time to explain what they mean. So that when you are seeing something, it's just the EP machine. So I want you to start seeing something like this. Yeah, I've talked about the sinus cycle length and different things. AH, HV, we all know the meaning of PR interval, QRS, QT. Now, so um, I think we we'll still come to this. Um, this um, EP study. I think I'll take that one as the next lecture. But, um, just to emphasize my sinus node recovery. Sorry. Um, sorry, let me just quickly describe that AH in this thing. So when I catheter in the right atrium, um, and that catheter is on the east bundle. And as I said, depending on the number of polar points on the east bundle or on the atrium, it will determine the number of waves you want to generate. So another catheter can be in the coronary sinus, which represents CS. And that catheter can be in the right ventricle. So I defined AH, meaning that the time interval between when you generated uh, atrial activity to the east bundle is AH interval. Okay, so we can see the east bundle activity here, the atrial activity here. Okay, so that this time interval is AH. Now the interval between the east bundle and the ventricular activity is HV. I'm sure somebody will be wondering, how did they know that this one is atrial activity? How did they know that this one is bundle? Dr. Do you have a question like that? 
Okay. So I just want um, communication so that I'll be no <laughs> I'm online or oh, I'm not off first. We can yes, hear you. Following you. Think we are following you. Yeah, you so. Oh, thank you, Chief. So now I'm sure you look at this wave and you do look bizarre that what is the meaning of all these things. Don't worry, there's a simple way to know. At the EP lab, mm -hmm. the, the patient will be on LM surface ECG. So this is the surface ECG, okay? And these are the catheters that are already in the patients, the H, H, um, the high right atrium, the East bundle, the P means proximal, mid segment distal as i explained using these catheters the cs means coronary sinus depending on the number of points on the catheter number of polar points can be up to 10 so you can even have cs up to 10 and depends on the number you want to display you might want to display two segments you might want to display four segments on this electrical presentation and the rv2 you can have proximal rv you can have distal rv mid rv okay some can even have LV. And I said, for you to get into the LV, you have to puncture the entire tricept and get into the left atrium and direct your catheter into the left ventricle. So some can have LV. Now, this wave, I don't want you to confuse you at all. There's no confusion in it. If you are not sure of what the wave is representing, simple. Look at the surface ECG. Surface ECG will show you what it represents. So you can see P wave. You know that P wave only means uh, atrial activity. And if you see it, uh, you see HR is atrial activity. Don't forget that I said that um, the catheter in the east bundle is close to the right atrium. It can recognize HR activity and at the same time recognize every node activity and the East bundle activity that is going to the ventricle. So the east bundle will be a central reference point of your catheters to determine HR because it's the catheter that is in between. It is the catheter that is in between for the right side. Remember some portion of it. If I go back to this slide, if I go back to this slide, this is the east bundle catheter. So you can see that some portion of it is on the AV node in the atrium. Some portion of it has gone to the ventricle. So it can be a reference catheter to determine HL activity, AV nodal activity, and the ventricular activity. It's a very, very important reference point. The same is also the CS, so coronary sinus catheter. Remember, I said coronary sinus catheter runs in the atrioventricular group. It's going to be posterior to this structure. Atrial ventricular means that it is in between the junction of the atrium and the ventricle. So it can help you recognize activity in the atrium and at the same time, activities down the ventricle because it just starts at the junction. So it can be a reference point. And that brings to the point where if you are seeing East CS activity, you can see that it is merging both atrial activity here and is merging ventricular activity here because it is in between atrium and ventricle. Hope it's clear, um, Dr. Ajayi. No. Yes, sir. Okay, someone yeah, said- Yes, it's clear. Okay, louder. Clear, okay. Please, it's, it's not clear, let just know. Yeah, okay. which one, which okay. part, which part? Um, about the catheter being sent, sensing impulses both at the bundle of peace and the morsel. How can the catheter You mean this a... slide? Yes, that slide. Yeah. So let me. Yeah, let me hear from you. What? Um, uh, explain. Explain what you want to clear that. Okay. No. So my confusion now is. Is it this um, what looks like septations on the catheter that is sensing on both on those three sides that those three points either on the his bundle the AV node or the ventricle, and that's where the impulses travel through, or it goes directly through the catheter. I'm not sure I got that. Okay, so your catheter is like an ECG. Um, it's like an intracardiac ECG. 
You get me, man? Yes, I do. You have a surface CG, you have an intracardiac ECG. Okay? So, is but it can do two things. Mm -hmm. One, it can sense electrical activity like your surface ECG will sense. You get? But secondly, it can pace the, the uh, um, either the atrium or ventricle or, any, or the ECG. It can pace anywhere it is located. It wants it to pace. But the surface ECG will not pace. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tony will tell us one thing that can face the heart from the surface. Chief Tony. I said it before. That's why I'm disturbing it. Dr. Tony is not with us. Okay. So there's one thing that surface. I am here. My baby yeah. is disturbing me. I'm here. I'm being babysitter this night. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, don't let us disturb you. So I'm sure we've all heard of. I'll come to your question, with Dr. Dibuali. Um, you've seen a defibrillator before. There are yes. some defibrillator that can not AED now, defibrillator itself. There are some defibrillator that has the opportunity to, that has a, a ability to pace external pacing. So those kind of defibrillator damage use the pad. You will see there. I'm sure Doctor Tony had seen. I'm Tony now. You see now. It's not interesting. That you put the pad on the patient rather than just defibrillating, you can do surface pacing. So I'm just trying to tell you that even surface ECG, surface electrodes who can pace apart from intracardiac electrodes, we can actually pace the heart from the surface using the pads. Um, so now to come down to your question, and the answer to it is that this electro, this thin, mm, this polar segment of the catheter, this white segment, this white dot of this catheter, they can both sense and pace at the same time. Are you getting me now? Yes, Hello, I am. Yes, sir. So that means if it can sense, that means that any electrical activity in this atrium around the distal end of the atrium, it can sense it. Any electrical activity passing through the AV node and the east, it will sense it. Any electrical activity getting to the ventricle, it will sense it. But it will not sense anything distal because it's not distal. And that is why we said we can use that a reference line to determine atrial activity, is bundle activity and eventricular activity. Did you get me, man? Yes, I yeah. did. I... No, if it's not clear, you can still ask. I got, I got it. Thank you. Yeah. So the same thing I said. If you put a catheter in the CS coronary sinus, is in between the left atrium and left ventricle. Because it's in between, it can sense left atrial activity and at the same time sense ventricular activity, at least the proximal segment of the ventricular activity, but it will not sense the distal activity because it is just running on the groove. And that is why if you come to this segment, you can see for the catheter in the right atrium, eh, you will not, it can only sense atrial activity, but it will not sense ventricular activity because it's only in the right atrium. In fact, it's not close to the east bundle at all. So we are not seeing any east bundle activity. Are you getting me, man? Yeah. Look at the catheter in the right ventricle. You cannot, it cannot sense any atrial activity because it's not close to the atrium at all. It will not sense any east bundle activity because it's not there. So it is in the apex of the ventricle. So it can only sense ventricular activity. But look at the catheter in the east, depending on the segment of the east. Because it is in between the atrium and the ventricle, it can, you can see atrial activity. You can see east bundle activity. And you can see ventricular activity. Look at the catheter in the coronary sinus. Hmm? As I said, it's between the junction of the atrium and the ventricle. You can see 
HL activity, right? Because it's left atrium, so it's a little bit delayed compared to the right atrium. Just like you see V1, in V1, lead V1, you know that the P wave, the first activity we see will be the right atrial P wave, that is, that's the first positive deflection, and the, first ne and the neg first negative deflection is the left atrial activity, right? You remember, Dr. Adebwari? Yes, I do, Chief. Yeah, so you can see that it is, that, that's a slight delay you are seeing here because it's left atrial activity is sensing. So that is why you can see that that is the atrial activity. And at the same time, it will sense ventricular activity because it's what? Between the junction of the atrium and the ventricle. Now, why is it a little bit delayed from the right ventricle? Because right ventricular depolarization occurs before the left ventricle because this thing is close to the left ventricle. So that's what explains this wave. Now, as I said, don't, I don't want you to get confused. Sometimes you can see the wave, especially when you are seeing AVRT, AVNRT, the wave can be confusing. The first thing you look at is your surface ECG. Don't miss the surface ECG. Surface ECG, you can see P wave. You can see QRS activity, right? Yes. So the P wave corresponds straight. You just trace it down. You know that, oh, whatever I'm seeing here is atrial activity. Okay? And if yeah. you see QRS complex, that means whatever I'm seeing should be what? Ventricular activity. Okay? And in between will be the east bundle activity. So what we are saying in essence is that the this time interval between the atrium and the east bundle, AH, and the time interval between the east bundle and the ventricular activity is HV. Those time intervals are important. And as I've previously explained, I've explained the sinus cycle length, the time interval between one pacing of the atrium and the next pacing of the atrium. And I've explained sinus node recovery time between the time you pace the last, the last time you pace the atrium and the time the normal intrinsic SA nodal activity occurred. Is the sinus node recovery time. Okay. Any question before I move to the pacemaker segment? No questions. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. So let me just quickly run around the pacemaker one, then we can now complete EP1 later. Because the pacemaker one is fast and straightforward. Um, okay, sorry, my slide is showing now. Right? Yes, it is. So I'll just yes. run briefly through the pacemaker one because we're all grounded in that one. So, uh, sorry, my slide is not moving. Let me, my slide is not moving. Let me remove it. End this. End this. So, I'm going to reshare. Yeah, it's now showing now. Yes, it is. Thank you, sir. So I'm going to slide show. So mm -hmm. let's don't let us bother about the history. We all know everything about pacemaker and the history of pacemaker. We all know the normal EKG. Um so indications for pacemaker. Um so we all know that pacemaker is used for sign of the arrhythmias and um The pacemaker, apart from it being used as sinus by the arrhythmias, you can also use the pacemaker in some cases of tachycardia. So, what condition in tachycardia would this pacemaker for? If the patient has sinobradi syndrome, uh, sorry, tachybradi syndrome, I mean, tachybradi syndrome. So, tachybradi syndrome, the main reason why you are using tachybradi syndrome is because when the patient has, um, Tachy, cardia, you want to block and pace. Block and pace. That's the main treatment of tachybody syndrome, apart from ablating the areas that are affected. You can, pull, uh, you can 
you can block and paste. So meaning that when the patient is having, you play the patient on beta blockers. But remember that beta blocker can be, cause very severe bradyarrhythmias in them. So to maximize your beta blocker use, you will now put the patient on a pacemaker. The aim of the pacemaker is a backup, backup that when the bradycardia goes below your lower set rate, then the pacemaker will kick up and paste the heart. So the patient can be being on maximum therapy of the beta blocker, but the bradycardia will be taken care of by the pacemaker. So that is very frequent among synonymous dysfunction. The other indications are advanced AV block. Um, we all know that there are also SA nodal block too. We all know that patients with sick sinus syndrome too, they might they might need pacemaker, usually symptomatic. So Brad, um, the AV nodal, AV, advanced AV block, actually symptomatic AV block. Usually want to use pacemaker in third degree or high grade AV block. But when the Mobis type two, type one and type two are symptomatic, then they might need a pacemaker. Okay. And some instances uh, where the bradycardia is of other origin, secondary origin. So for example, patient have severe sepsis. Uh, those kind of patients would not need permanent pacemaker, but use temporary pacemaker. Um, patient that had MI, acute myocardial infarction, you might not necessarily put the permanent pacemaker on there because if you treat the MI, you revascularize the, H, the, AV, uh, the coronary vessel, which will include full supply to the AV node or AC node of whatever that is affected. The patient will not need your pacemaker again. So in those kind of patients, you put temporary pacemaker. So we all know indications for temporary pacemaker. Okay. Um, my slide is not moving again. I don't know why that. Okay, sorry. So this is just an example. This is the example of a six sinus syndrome where there's a drop in the Q PQRS complex. Um, I don't want to waste our time. We all know this um, Mobis type one and all that. We all know Mobis type two. Um, we all know third degree AV block. Hope I'm not going too fast. I don't want to bore us <laughs> before we know. So we come to temporary pacemaker and permanent pacemaker. So um, I want to send something to the group to see the difference of how it looks like. Um, sorry, one quick one. Um, Sorry, just one second. I'm trying to bring out a picture of what it looks like. So we can use um okay. So um remember I first made a comment that you can paste the heart from the surface. So this is the external distributor. That can pace. I want to. He lost you for a minute. Yeah, one second. Hello? Hello, sir. We're not hearing yeah. you the other time. Hello? 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 Yes. Hello, oh, sir. Sorry. Okay, sorry for that break up. Um, have we gone to the group, sir? Yes, we yes. are there. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so oh, you can. I want you to open it so you can see the defibrillator. We can all see the defibrillator, right? Yes. Yeah. Now we can see the pad on your right hand side. 
we all know the devotion yeah. and the pad we use. Now, I want you to now look at the left hand side to see the markers on the defibrillator. You can see where they wrote PESA rate start output. Can you yes, see? Sir. Yeah. That's on the defibrillator. That's um, one. Th so that's a defibrillator that can pace from the surface. So the PESA means that you can pace from that pad that you put on the patient, and you can determine the rates at which you want to pace. Are we getting it, sir? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And you can determine the output. So output simply means the minimal electrical activity to capture the ventricle. We also come to threshold and that's simply meaning of the output, the output energy at which you want to capture depolarization or capture the electrical activity. So um, if we, I'm just trying to use this to emphasize that you can pace the, I'm sending the second pictures just to tell us that you can do a surface pacing. So that's a form of temporary pacemaker. Here's a second picture to show us. Can you see the, can you see the second one I sent? Yes, sir. Yeah, you can see under the green button, you will see pacer there. And this patient is actually being paced. Because if you look at the QRS on the, you know, it's a broad QRS, the paste QRS. Okay. Sorry, sorry, excuse me, Chief. You said, how do we know that the patient is being paced? It's broad QRS. Okay. And you can see the pacing spike. The, P, the pink, they wrote P pacing spike. You see the, the if you see the, you are seeing the second um, image, right? Yes. You can see, just look at the ECG on that machine. You see a, under the green, the ECG is green, right? Green color, right? Like lemon, yes. Okay, lemon, no, sorry. Uh, lemon, sorry. <laughs> so you can see the- Like sea green, sea green. Is it green? Yeah, I mean, sea green, okay. <laughs> so you can see the purple line. That's the vertical line under that is the stuff. Yeah. So that's the P. That is you are seeing the P there. That's the patient spike. Okay. Yes, sir. So I well, just trying to emphasize that you can pace from the surface. So the next form of temporary pacemaker is the one we all know, which is um, I'm going to send it to us. This machine actually costs like about two M. This one. So you can see this. You see the third image I sent. Uh, this thing that looks like AC remote. That looks like AC remote. I mean, okay. <laughs> it's, it's 2M. That thing is that metronic that I will use. But it's 2M. Okay, so what I'm trying to emphasize is this. <clears throat> this temporary pacemaker, we have the dual chamber, we have the single chamber. I want you to look at the one that has um, the screen. That's the first one. That has the screen. You can see AT10, right? Yes, now, first things first, if you, if you, Scroll it a little bit down. You see dual chamber generator written on it. Yes. Yeah. Doctor, do you hear me? Hope you're following. Okay. So for that dual, yes, I'm following. But thank you, the dual chamber. Okay. So click on it, zoom it a little, and try to um wipe your screen down. Okay. You seen it? Yes, sir. Yeah. There's a reason why I'm trying to point us to that. You see, on the topmost part of that machine itself, you are seeing two. Okay, yeah, you seen the dual chamber, but I want you to look at the machine itself now. I want you to look focus okay. on the machine itself. You will see 
two dots on the top part of that machine. Two, two on both sides. Yes. Yeah. So those two, uh, it's because I've seen it before, that's what I'm trying to describe what it means. So the first two you see is A. They wrote in between the two dots is A. A means a trump. Okay. In between the second two dots, you see a V. I'm sure you can see the V. Yes, sir. It means ventricle. Okay. So usually we'll connect your electrodes. On top of the machine, there's a hole where you can connect your wire, this cable wire that is beside it. I'm sure you can see that cable wire beside it. Yes. Yeah. There's a hole on top where you can connect for the ventricle or for the atrium, depending on where your, you have put your lead. If your lead is in the atrium, you connect it to the atrium. If your lead is in the ventricle, you put your lead in the ventricle. If your lead is in both atrium and ventricle, you put them in both atrium and ventricle. Are you getting me now? Now, secondly, I want you to notice something. The first knob you are seeing is the rate. I'm sure you can see rate written on it. So that means you can determine the rate yourself. I want to place this patient at 80 bits. I want to place this patient at 90 bits. You can determine the rate yourself. I will get him, man. Doctor, do you know? Yes, sir. Yes. Then the next button knob you are seeing is the atrial output. As I said, output simply means the amount of energy you will need to capture a depolarization, either in the atrium or in the ventricle. So you can go as high as no, at the number the energy you need to capture a, a depolarization. But also remember that the higher the energy you use, the more you drain the battery. So the best is to go to the lower most voltage that will generate ventricular or atrial depolarization. But the first knob is for atrial output. The, sec the third, sorry, the sec I mean the second knob is atrial output. The third knob is ventricular output. So mean that if you're leading ventricle, you will turn the knob to determine the voltage you want. Okay? But as I said, it's best to use the minimal voltage that will generate depolarization. Now, the fourth knob is the knob used for different settings. So in that knob, uh, you used to select your mode. We will still come to mode, the different modes. Do you want a DDD mode? you want a DVI mode? you want a AI mode? So you can use do mode setting on this type of temporary pacemaker machine. You get it? Okay. I hope we can move on. Do you have any yes, questions? Sir, we can. We are with you, sir. Yes, Let's sir. Move. Okay. So it looks pretty straightforward. Thank you. Okay, so um we can now come back to the Zoom presentation. So I've just described the temporary pacemaker. So go to the permanent pacemaker, how it looks like. So the permanent pacemaker, we all know how it looks like. We all know from different generations, but the latest generation are the G and the E. As I said, what differentiates an ICD from a pacemaker is the size of the battery. The D looks like an ICD because it looks bigger than the E. Okay? So it's just the size of the battery. Chief, please, I Dr. Yima, his hand has been Yima. up. Like oh, please, uh, uh, I didn't notice. Please, you can ask, please. Okay, thank you, Chief. Um, I just wanted to ask a question. If you have um, that um, surface uh, pacemaker, why do you now want to go through the process of doing this minimally invasive, I mean, passing the minimally invasive temporary pacemaker? Hello? Hello? I think it's network. Okay. What's the network. advantage and disadvantage? Hello, sir. Talk about COVID. Am I on? Yes, you are on. I think it's network. Yes, the network is bad, but I don't know. 
No, him, hey, Dr. Yim. But he's asking what's the advantage of um, actually doing minimally invasive procedures. Mm. I know, I know the question is asking. I understand, but I want to be sure he's, if he's on back so that we can answer him. Because I can't see participants. Yeah, I'm back on. I'm back on. Okay, yeah. so I can answer now, right? So that's your question. Why was why go the extent of going puncturing the patient? Okay, so now first thing you should know is that yes, yes. Always first thing first is that remember that this patient has um, it depends on indication number one. If the indication is for resuscitation, then I want to resuscitate a patient for whatever reason you defibrillated him, you went into the cardiac, you want to resuscitate, then a defibrillator surface testing will, will go a long way. And if you need it urgently, before you say that you get the patient to under a fluoroscopy machine to be puncturing, and before you get the lead inside, a surface ECG would go a long way. A surface pacemaker and pacing will go a long way. But a surface pacing cannot last the patient more than five days. The pad will wear off. And before you say Jacobis, if the patient is dependent on that pacing, the time interval to take between you time you will change that pad. The pad is just a gun. We've all seen the pad before. The time interval you will need to change that pad, or light goes off. <laughs> Electrical activity, you know, it's plugged, and light goes off in Nigeria. <laughs> that patient is at school. <laughs> Before you say, uh, you did call, you put the patient on it, you have some besides monitoring. Before you come the following day, uh, it's, it's a risk. Gone. It's a risky thing. So it's not as if it cannot do the job. It can do the job. But just know that he said that you can only use it for at least two or three days. Because the part is going to wear off. Forget it. It's going to, it's a gum. It's going to wear off. And just pray that the patient is not dependent on that person. Because if it's pacemaker dependent. So, wow. so, so um, Chief, that's the, uh, that's just the frank answer to the thing. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay, so um, permanent, so we're going to the permanent pacemaker. So we all know permanent pacemaker can be single chamber, double chamber. It's only CRTD that is um, TV chambers. But we are, we are talking about pacemaker. Um, sorry, my slide is, okay. And we all know that there are different types of leads. This can come out in MCQ. So we have the screw leads, we have the tiny leads. Um, so the difference is that the tiny lead means that you don't have to screw it. Moment you put the lead into the atrium or the ventricle, eh? this 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 um, knob mm, will hook into the trabeculis, okay, and fit into it. Are we getting it? So the aim is that this tip gets into the wall, myocardial wall, and these knobs get entangled into the tuberculosis and the stock. That's the aim of using a tiny lead. Okay? But for a screw lead, I'm not sure if you can see this one properly. A screw lead simply means that it has a screw. Okay, look at the D. Hello, I hope I'm still audible, sir. Yes, you are. Uh, yes, you are. D. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So you can see the, the, the D shows a screw at the tip. If you look at it very, if you, if you widen your screen or zoom your screen, you would see this screw at the end. So this thing has to be screwed in. How do we screw it in? It's very simple. At the Tail end of the cut of the of the lead. There's a place where you can apply a screw. There's a the, the manufacturers have made a plastic-like screwdriver. It looks like a plier. I'm sure we've seen it. We know a plier, so it looks like a plastic plier. So you just screw it at that back, and it would 
threw him this lead into the myocardium. So that is that. Um, it can be a pacemaker, can be a unipolar or a bipolar. So how do we? Uh, you might not need, need to know how it is done, but a unipolar. What simply means? Yeah. So what it simply means is that a unipolar has one end, the tip end is the cathode, while the battery itself serves as a handle. That means for you know every electrical activity must have a positive and a negative current. So the negative, the tip is the cathode and the battery is the anode. Some, the tip can be the anode while the body surface will be the anode, um, sorry, cathode, the tip will be cathode and body surface, body surface will be the anode. So depending on how it comes, but most of the time, this is how it will be for a unipolar. Bipolar, both the cathode and the anode are on the lead for bipolar. So they are just, the anode is just proximal to the cathode for a bipolar pacemaker. Okay. We all know we've all seen different x rays of pacemaker. So let's go to the mode, classification of the mode. Um, so we have this generic coding for the codes for the pacemaker, um, it's a universal coding. So that um, anywhere in the world, when you tell me the the code of the pacemaker, I can decipher what it simply means. Because sometimes you can do a pace uh, put do a pacemaker in Nigeria and go and start interrogating it or programming it in US, and vice versa. So we should be able to know the type of pacemaker and the the programming mode. So that programming code is important to anybody that will be working on the pacemaker and it's easy for communication. So we all know the meaning that the chamber, the first let alpha, um, the first alphabet is the chamber paste. The second alphabet is the chamber sense. The third alphabet is the response to sensing. The fourth is rate modulation. And the fifth is anti, although it's for the use, but this anti tachycardia pacing, I've described it before that that's the function of an ICD. Okay, that's the function of an ICD. Now, so the chamber paste, we know if it's atrium, it's ventricle, if it's both, you put draw D. The chamber sense, it could be if you're Lead is in the atrium. You can sense the atrium. You can sense the ventricle. You can sense both. Then I also want us to know that there's a way you can put a lead in the ventricle. The patient does have only one lead in the ventricle, and you can sense both atrium and ventricle. I think I have a slide on that. Sorry, just I'm coming. Just one minute. Okay. Uh, remember, I just made that comment, Abby, that you can have a lead in the ventricle, right? I'm bringing out my hair. Hello? Am I still clear? Yes, you are. So this is not a double chamber pacemaker. And I'll tell you why it's not double chamber. So there's a lead in the ventricle. <clears throat> okay? But the manufacturer has made it so much in a way that the proximal end of that lead can sense the distal end too can sense and pace. But the proximal end can only sense, but you will not pace. Okay? So if I put this lead in the ventricle, remember the proximal end will, will, will be in the atrium because it's passing through the atrium to the ventricle. So the proximal head can sense. That's why they have tried to draw this thing out. The proximal end can sense. But the distal end will both sense and pace. So remember, it's a ventricular lead. So the chamber paste is the ventricle. So you put V, right? But the chamber sense is sensing both atrium and ventricle. So you put D. Okay? So that is where VD comes from. Do, do we get it? No. Yes, sir. Okay. No, okay. sir. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, let me explain to me what is um, 
what's the challenge? Let me just explain to me so that I can clarify it so I can know where to come. The V, the V. No, the V and D. I'm not talking about the last D. Okay, the V and D. I think okay. I know the D, but I don't know what the D is. Okay. <laughs> Let me come back again. The first alphabet is the chamber piece. Did you get that one? Yes, chief. The second alphabet is the chamber you sense. Maybe I should have explained what sense means. Sense means that the ability to detect intrinsic myocardial activity, either in the atrium or in the ventricle. Okay. Did you get that one? Yes, chief. The ability of that lead to say that, oh, electric deposition has intrinsically occurred in that chamber. That's the meaning of the, to sense electrical activity of the chamber. Either the atrial chamber or the ventricular chamber. Pace, we all know what pace means, is to cause, release electrical activity to cause depolarization. That's pace. Either in the atrium or in the ventricle. Are you getting me? So, if, so we're trying to say that the lead that has the, the chamber in the particular lead would paste. The first alphabet is the chamber paste. The second alphabet is the chamber that you are sensing. You can choose to sense only the atrium. You can choose to sense only the ventricle, but you can also choose to sense both the atrium and the ventricle. Are we getting it, Yes, Chief. So that makes it D. So if you are doing both sensing both atrium and ventricle, then it becomes dual, D. That's the meaning of D, dual, double. Okay? Yes, Chief. The same alphabet, too, for dual for first, um, for the first alphabet, if I have dual, I means that I'm pacing both atrium and ventricle. Okay? Yes. But I'm also trying to now emphasize the fact that, you know, you will have thought that if I put a lead in the atrium, then it should, own, it should pace only the atrium and sense the atrium, right? Yes. The same way, if I put a lead in the ventricle, I can say that only it can only sense the ventricle, uh, pace the ventricle and sense the ventricle, right? Yes, Chief. But I'm now trying to tell you that there's also another type of lead that you put only in the ventricle, but you will sense both ventricle and atrial together. Are you getting me, man? Yes, Chief. The lead, yes, is in the ventricle. You will have thought that the only thing you should do is to only place the ventricle and only sense the ventricle. But if there are special ones that you put in the ventricle, and it will only pace the ventricle, only pace the ventricle, but it will sense both atrium and ventricle. Okay? Yes. And that's why I went to this image. That's why I went to this uh, image to show us. Are you, are you at the, can you see the image? I'm trying I'm to the image. Yes. This is a single lead. Forget this one they just drew. It's just to emphasize what they're trying to buttress. Um, if you look at the indicators, indicator behind you, you can see my arrow, right? Yes. You can see it's saying pacing and sensing. Abby, you can see the circle with a star inside, right? Yes. You can see another circle that does not have a star. That means only sensing only, it cannot pace. Do you get it now? Yes, Chief. So that comes to, let's go back to that diagram. You can now see this diagram. So you can see the empty circle. Means that it can only sense it can paste. Right? Yes, Chief. Then you can see the lower circle. It can sense and it can paste. Do you get it? Yes, Chief. So I'm just trying to show you that this is a single lead, but can sense both chamber. Hello, am I studying? 
Yes, I'm following you. Okay, so it's a single lead, a single lead which can pace and sense the ventricle, but can also sense the atrium. So what code will you give it? It can pace the ventricle only. It will be V, right? Yes. But it can sense both the ventricle and the atrium. So it will be what? D. D. So that's where the VD comes from. Are you getting it? Yes, Chief. Thank you. Okay. Um, so to go to the next alphabet, the third alphabet is, are we seeing the third alphabet now? Yes. Is the response to sensing. So response to sensing means that I can program it that to tell it not to respond. As in, not to respond to sense, not to even sense at all. You put O. But not to respond to sensing, meaning that even this is sensing activity. You know, the natural thing is that if you sense electrical, intrinsic electrical activity, then you should not bother testing, right? You should allow intrinsic electrical activity to cause its natural depolarization, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I can program in such a way that I don't want intrinsic electrical activity to function. I just want to be pacing all the time. Okay? So that yeah. one, I'll put O. I'll put O. And I'll tell you what, in what clinical situation would you do that? I'll tell you. But let me explain the other part. So meaning that I am sensing, but I'm not responding to sensing. That means that either it's sense or not, just pace. Then it's already O. There's no response to sensing. Are you getting me now? When there's a response to sensing, meaning that when I sense, I should not pace. I should withhold pacing. Right? That one I'll put I in bit. Are you getting me? Yes. And the T just means trigger. Trigger means pace. Okay? So if I have the dual, both in bit and pace, then I'll put D. Okay? Now, so let's put some codes together. I can put a, I can put one lead inside the ventricle. Are you getting me, ma? Yes, too. Place the ventricle and sense only the ventricle, then not respond to sensing. So that would be a VVO. Okay? Yes. The same way I can put, I can put the ventricle for pacing of the ventricle, sense the ventricle, and respond to the ventricular activity by inhibiting. Inhibit pacing. Then that would be a V, V, high. high. Right? Yes, Chief. But you can also have both pace and inhibit at the same time. That means I have chamber paste the ventricle, I chamber sense the ventricle, and I do both in bit I paste. Then that'll be a VVD. Do you get it, man? Yes, sir. So the same way with double chamber, just put the course together, chamber paste, chamber sense, and the response to sensing. So you can have a DDD or DDI, or DDO, meaning that both chambers, both chamber, sense both chamber, but don't respond to sensing. Okay? Sorry, can I raise, I have a smoke. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. For the response, and you have it, how do you regulate, at what time do you need to be trigger the process of activating both the I get your question, no problem. Um, so I get your question. Hmm? So when you have, um, when you're doing your programming, eh, there is, um, 
uh, I want to just remember the name. There are some time interval, just like your PR interval. There's also the machine, something that mimics a PR interval. I will get, if I get the name, I will let you know. Okay. It tells you that when PRs occur, then there's a time interval that you expect a QRS, right? Yes. And for patients that have um, complete ad block, meaning that there were multiple Ps, but there was no QRS, right? Yes, yes. So, now that's the reason why you're putting a pacemaker on the patient. So you now yes. focus in such a way that when there is a P, then I will put a time interval to allow for QRS, intrinsic QRS. Meaning that if it exceeds that time, then I must pace. Okay. So yes. let's say a normal PR interval is um, you are using a time of 200 milliseconds. And you said, okay, I want to allow intrinsic QRS. So let me make it 250 milliseconds. Add it time t of 250 milliseconds if there is no if i don't sense qrs intrinsic qrs then i must pace okay okay so that's how it is programmed okay i get it and then if you sense you need to check QRS. yeah if it sends then you don't need to pace okay okay, okay sir chief dr yes, Gilos also oh. has a question oh. as we you know yeah, please. Um, All right. Thank you, Dr. Ladimiji. Yes. And uh, my question is, what's the difference between this um, norm and um, the eye, the inhibition? I didn't get you clearly. Norm. Yes. The um, in the response oh, to saying. Abby. Yes. Between oh yes. Uh, oh. Okay. The difference, Abby. Yes. Yes. The difference is this. In the eye, it means that if I recognize intrinsic activity, I should not, I should inhibit pacing. Hello, okay. sir. Dr. Julius, yes, you get I, can, me? I can hear you. Yes, sir. That if QRS occurs, just like I just explained that for Dr. Kobe, that I see a P wave, right? Let's say I have a lead in the ventricle, okay? So ventricle is the one that is paced. I have... Um, ventricle sense, right? Yes. VV high. Now, let's say I've, I would have programmed a timing between my PR interval that between when P occurs, remember the major function of this ventricular pacing is that it must generate a QRS, right? Yes. So let's say, look at that, let's um, imagine an ECG. You have a P wave, Abby? and you have a PR interval. I will have time my PR interval to say that wait for 200 milliseconds for, to expect the normal intrinsic activity, QRS complex, right? Yes. At the end of 200 milliseconds, if I don't see intrinsic activity, then I should trigger. Okay. That means I should pace. Are you getting me? Yes, I do. But if before 200 milliseconds, I see intrinsic activity, then I should not bother pacing. Abi? Okay. Now, because or else if I pace it and intrinsic activity is occurring at the same time, I'm pacing on the efficient intrinsic activity now. Mm. It's wrong, right? Mm. So at that mm. time, I should be able to inhibit. Did you get it, sir? Yes, I did. Okay. Now, a O means that even if I see intrinsic activity, still based on top of it. That's the meaning of a O. Don't respond to that intrinsic activity. Be blind to it. That's the meaning. Blind the machine to intrinsic activity. Are you getting me? Okay. So, just pace. That's the meaning. Now, I'm sure what should be in your mind is that why should you do that, right? Then instead, you'll be asking yourself, why should I be pacing when there's a normal intrinsic activity? Dr. Julius, mm. right? I'm sure that should be a question in your mind. Yes. Mm. That this patient has normal intrinsic activity. Why should the pacemaker pace on top of it? You say that that's a stupid setting, right? So we'll give you clinical indications where you do it. 
So pacemaker leads. Eh? I want you to get the clinical scenario as well. So pacemaker leads can recognize some intrinsic activity that is externally influenced. Meaning that false positive. In what okay. condition would the pacemaker lead recognize an activity and think and or assume that it is an intrinsic activity? A, in a condition when a patient, you are taking your theater and you go to the diatomy machine. I'm sure we have all seen diatomy pen. So it's part of MCQ question. In what condition would you use a VO or VVO? When the patient is going for surgery, eh? and you're going to use a diatomy machine, the diatomy machine generates electrical activity. I'm sure we have all seen diatomy, diatomy pen before, diatomy to coagulate, to cut the surgeon used in the theater. Dr. Julius, you're following that? Yes, I'm following. Yeah, so it generates electrical activity. So the pacemaker lead can be thinking that that is the intrinsic electrical activity of the patient. Are you getting me? I need to be yes, inhibiting pacing, inhibiting pacing until the patient goes into AC stony. Because he was thinking that that electrical data, me electrical country, data me and all that, it is the patient's electrical activity. That's one. When a patient is exposed to my electromagnetic waves, different electromagnetic waves, that's why you said that if a patient on ICD is going for MRI, you have to reprogram the machine. Or a patient with pacemaker is going for an MRI, you reprogram the machine, right? Because they are MRI compatible pacemakers. You know, normally you not take a patient that has pacemaker to an MRI. The MRI machine will magnet will magnetize the battery. Okay, but there are some MRI compatible pacemakers. But even at that, the MRI electrical wave can disorientate the, the lead. That the lead will be thinking that the patient is having intrinsic activity and it will be in beating person, in beating person, and the patient can just go into AC stony. Are you getting it, sir? Yes, I am. So in those instances, it is not appropriate to sense because it will be a false sensing. You get it, sir? Yes. So in those conditions, those are the conditions where you use a VOO. You pace the ventricle, don't bother sensing, don't bother responding to sensing, just be pacing. Okay. Okay. Dr. Copy, is it clear? Yes, it is. It's very, it's Dr. very clear. Very Dr. Clear. Dr. Dudu, hear me? Hope people have not slept. Thank Sorry. you. No, we're here. Okay. Very clear. We're we here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the last, um, I hope it's straightforward. So the last code, the last code for a pacemaker is the rate modulation. I think we try to explain this, that for example, for every patient, and their heart rate, nobody's heart rate is stagnant. The heart rate at sleep is different from the heart rate while jogging. Yes. So you should initiate a rate response code, as in activate it. The reason is that when the patient is running, let's say a patient is pacemaker dependent. If you put it at O, if you don't activate the rate response, it simply means that the patient can be on a permanent heart rate of 60 beats per minute. That would, be soft. that would suffice the patient when he's sitting down. That would suffice the patient when he's lying down or sleeping. But when the patient starts running, running for bus or running for day's activity or climbing the stairs, his heart rate will constantly be at 60 and he's going to have syncope. Are you getting it? Because his heart rate is not increasing. You get so that is where you must activate the rate modulation so that it can meet up with patients at rate activity. I hope it's clear, sir. Okay, so the last part is for ICD. 
is, and I think we've talked about this anti tachycardia patient before. ATP. Anti tachycardia patient means that if a patient is pacing at a particular rate, uh, a patient, you know, I see the use for patients that have VT, VF, and um, you have some modes in them. You can do and override the patient's rate. Let's say that patient goes into VT at a rate of 180. We said you can program it that you can override that rate by initiating the artic tachycardia pacing. And that one will start pacing the heart at 200 or 250, higher than the rate of the patient's VT. And that can abort the VT because the heart will only be following a rate that is fastest. So if you are running that, if the patient is having a VT at a rate of 180, and you now initiate your ICD, that so the ICD program will now initiate a rate of 250, the heart will leave the 180 and be running at 250. And when the pacemaker, um, the ICD now notice that okay, this heart rate is running at 250 now, I can gradually start reducing the rate. So you now start reducing it to 150. On 120, 100, then you go back to his normal rate. So you have aborted that VT using an at tachycardiac pacing method. I hope it's clear, Dr. Dudian. Dr. Julius, is it clear? Yes, sir, but the yes. screen is not clear. Your slide is not clear. It's Green on oh. yeah. my slide. Mm, not yes. showing anything. It's not showing anything. Ah, sorry, yes. sorry. Yes, sir. I don't know. Sorry. Is it showing back now? It's about start. Okay, yes, it is. It is. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry, did you get the rate modulation default code? Yes, we got it. Yes, sir. So the fifth code is the for ICD. As I said, is a form of okay getting anti tachycardia pacing or shocking okay so the as i said the anti tachycardia pacing as i explained that if a patient is going to vt or at 180 rates you can the icd can initiate an anti tachycardia pacing rate that it will override that 180 by pacing the heart at 250 so the heart will always follow the one that is fastest so the heart will now start pacing at we now start running at a rate of 250. So after some seconds, the ICD can start decelerating the rate to 150 to 120 until it normalizes. So that medium we have aborted a VT in the patient without shocking the patient. So that's an anti-tachycardiac pacing method. Okay. Another option is if the antistachardia pacing method is not working, then it can release a shock and cause a DC shock. So usually shock at a dose of about 35, 35, 35, 50. Usually will not go above 50. That's joules, 35, 35, 50 joules. Okay, so we can go on, Abby. So the coding is clear. Dr. Julius. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, talk Thank about you. the coding. If you have a question, you can ask. Her. I'm Chipola Dimitri. Please, I'm a bit confused about um, triggering and inhibition. Okay. Tell me, tell me, let's discuss it. What? I'm listening so, to you, man. Okay, so I got that. Um, if you're going to inhibit, it means that for each time the um, the pacemaker senses um, ventricular active, um, intrinsic activity, it doesn't pace, so it inhibits that. 
Mm-hmm. But for triggering, is it the pacer that triggers the um, intrinsic activity or what? I, I didn't get that. Because it's supposed to, I think I got you say it was supposed to be both pacing and inhibiting or something. I think it. Okay, so for the triggering, triggering simply means space when there is no intrinsic activity. Okay. I don't know why they use the word trigger. They will have used the word pace. That's because that's what it means. Trigger, trigger activity, trigger the function, or trigger the pacing. That's the okay. meaning. It just simply means pace. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so as I said there, we can have, um, uh, we should know some indications for when to use a dual chamber and when to use so, a- I have a question, sir. Yes, please. Um, thank you so much. But I was just wondering, why is it that some coding we just have only three or four instead of the complete five? So how are we going to be sure that is the middle three, is the last three, or is the first three? How are we so sure which one they mean? Since can have dual in the first, second, and um, maybe yes. So how are we going to be sure that which one they mean? Or oh, oh, oh. Um, no, no, no. How are we so sure which one they are talking about? Now, what to explain for us now is like four, um, five modes of explanation. But most of the time, they just come in three. Or they call me four. Yeah, thank you for the question, man. Always remember that the first alphabet is the chamber piece anywhere yes, in the world. Okay. The second alphabet is same chamber sensed. Third alphabet okay. is the response. So this is the common three code that they will put. Okay. As I said, except they activate this last mode is when they will add it. If they don't activate it, they won't put this code. Okay. Because what's there in this code is just activate rate modulation, mean that there's a rate response. So okay. if it's not activated on the battery, then the only thing okay. you see is this first three. Okay, okay. As I said, the last fifth alphabet is for ICD. Okay. So coming okay. as you said, you will see three codes, this first three, that's what it means. But when they activate the rate modulation, then you see the fourth code. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, man. Thank you. So, um, as I said, eh, we should know, try to know um, the different coding, as you said, like three code, as Dr. Dujiemi said, and indications for them. The question is, when should I use a AA high? When should I use a VV high? Okay. Um, technically, they said you don't bother using AA high anymore. That is archaic. But there are indications for it, actually. I think it comes. Let me see if I have images. Just one minute. So AA high simply means that simply means that is the, the first alphabet is right, the chamber paste, right? We can see this image. Yes, and the chamber sense and the response. Yes. Mean that if I sense electrical activity, don't, don't space. Now, you use AA high when the patient has a problem with the SA node. Meaning that the AV node is intact and the other conduction fibers is right and left bundle and normal parking. There's no problem with them. That the only problem is in the SA node. So that means I need something to replace the function of the SA node. Okay? okay. Yes, sir. And other pathways are intact. So you put the patient on just an atrial lead. So it's do that in six sinus syndrome, okay? But always remember that eh, the patient that developed a six sinus syndrome is just a matter of time. It will soon develop AV node dysfunction also. Hmm. Because it's a generative process. 
So the same thing that I've taken off the SA note, we soon take off the A note. So that kind of a change person, if you have given him one a try, lead, just advise him that maybe in the next five years he's coming for the second lead. Because if his AV node is gone and is functional, then this lead is useless. The atrial lead is useless. It's only going to replace the atrium, but nothing will get to the ventricle. Okay? So that's why most of the time they prefer to give the patient a dual chamber, even if he has a SA node dysfunction. Because they know that very soon the AV node will also be gone. Okay? Is it clear? So, yeah. and that's a indications for the AA high. VV high, eh? It simply means that uh, the patient has no problem with the AV node, and so SN node, but his problem is with the AV node and down. Okay? So, like, patient with complete heart block, you can actually do a VVI for them because they don't have a problem. There are multiple pool waves that are not conducted. So, that means the problem is in the QRS complex. So, all he needs is just a lead in the ventricle. Okay? And you now use the ventricle to track the atrium. But it can also be dysfunctional. Dysfunctional in the sense that if you don't put a lead, so I'll go into this one now. I'll show us this. Um, we can see this now. This is a VVI mode, right? Yes, sir. You put a lead in the ventricle. But there's no lead in the atrium, probably because the patient has multiple P waves that are not conducted, right? Yes, sir. So if you look at this, look at this ECG now. You can see the pacemaker spike that generates a QRS complex, okay, with a T wave. Now, I want you to notice something. This is the P wave of the patient, right? Yes. Look at yes, the sir. time interval it takes to cause another patient. Simply because this lead will not sense the atrium. It only sense the ventricle. And it only plays the ventricle at, at a particular interval. So look at the time interval it took between the P wave and the next patient. You don't want this one, right? I'm sure you don't want this. You want the time interval to be normal. The PR mm -hmm. interval to be normal. But it cannot be normal if this if this lead is not sensing the atrium. It's not sensing P wave. It's only going to replace the ventricle at its own time. Okay. Okay, at the set time. Not it's not in relationship to the P wave. Okay. Are you getting it? If you set it at a rate yeah. of sixty beats per minute, it only pace at accurate timing of 60 beats per minute. It will not find that P wave has increased to 80 beats per minute. It will not find that P wave has increased to 90 beats per minute. It will only just be pacing the ventricle at 60 beats per minute. Sir, so at the third beat we have on this ECG, it means so that you can there see, is an intrinsic one. Exactly, and you can see that it did not pace. So okay. it inhibits, it inhibited. Okay, okay. Now, it was taking longer to see another one. That's why it paced. Mm. You get? Yes, so sir. that's the mode. So you can see it's straightforward, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. OK. So I'm going to answer the so broad questions. So Chief, in this, in this case now, that other one he showed us, that's uh, the one that will, the one that has one and left foot. That senses both the atrial and the ventricle. Uh -huh. In any cases, the ventricle will now come into play. Yes, yeah. so you can see the difference now. I've brought it up. Can you see? Thank you for that question. Yes. But I wanted to explain that one fully to ensure that people get it before I bring up this one. So you can see this now. It's just clearly um, explain what you just said, sir. This one will pace the ventricle, sense the ventricle, and also sense the atrium. So look at the, now you can see it would inhibit when there's normal intrinsic activity. Abi, you can see it didn't pace. Abi? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you're not seeing the P wave here, but it's around here. But let's look at the one you're seeing the P wave. Look at the time interval between when it's depolarized, the P wave and the depolarization. 
That means that it tracked the P wave. Yeah. Before it goes beyond the normal distance, it gave it on. Uh, sure, you get. So it didn't let it, there was no prolonged PR interval. Oh, look at this. It's trying to track the P wave. Are you getting it? So it's only one, it's only person the ventricle, but it's tracking the atrium to generate his spacing. Unlike this previous one. Sorry. Hope my slide is still showing. Yes, yeah. sir. So unlike this previous one, it's not tracking the atrium at all. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. Look at this one. You can see how close the P wave is to the QRS complex. You can see it's not tracking the atrium. You can see this one, the P wave is almost on the QRS. Right? Are you seeing it? Yes, sir. That there's no tracking of the atrium. So that's the problem with this one. That it can also mimic something that looks like a complete outlaw because there'll be AV dissociation. Because the ventricle is not tracking the atrium. I just needed us to get this image as well so that when we are looking at brown world, we're able to know what it means, what is happening. That's why I'm not mixing the EP class with the pacemaker class. Okay. So um, let's start solving some questions. So Dr. Dudu Yemi, we we'll start with you. Okay. So you can see this, right? Yes, sir. So what mode and justify the mode? Even if you can see the name of the mode, but justify the mode. Okay, it's uh, pacing the ventricle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pacing the ventricle. Uh, we can see the pacing um, spike mm -hmm. at the ventricle. So that's the then first alphabet. Second alphabet. The, the second alphabet means uh, it's not sensing anyone. Just right? fight on this is easy. No, no, why is he this easy? Sense, not... No, doctor, no, no. just take it easy. Don't worry, grab the answer inside you. <laughs> but what I'm trying to emphasize is that when you are seeing somebody's ECG, they will not tell you if it's VO or VO. Abby, you just see an ECG. Yes, they won't. Yes. So, how can you justify from the ECG that it is VO or VVI? So, let me hear from you. From this. Ah, okay. This OO means um, none, so it's not sensing. It's not sensing the event. Oh, uh, I need the okay. because. Ah. Sorry. It's just facing at the regular interval, so there's no. No, oh, wait, though. It's not going to be this question. Ah, uh, after all this talk for two hours. I think we'll do so it's just pacing. It's just pacing. It's not. Um, it's just ensuring that the ventricle is being paced. That's all. Because, uh, well, looking at the first, the first um, QRS complex, we can't see it very well, but it seems as if it's an intrinsic one. Then followed by uh, the paced ventricle. Then after it, we can see a T wave. Then laughter is another P wave and uh, it's not being followed it's not being closely um sensed, sensed by another contract uh, qrs contraction but we can see that uh the qrs complexes are being followed irrespective of when it is even intrinsic uh contraction the one two three four the fourth contraction the fourth um, contraction we can see the qrs we can see a p wave preceding there we can also see a spike i'm not sure why Fantastic. that QRS complex is not revealed it's not showing but we can see that the um the machine is still facing it exactly it's still facing it. Hello, sir. I have a question. You know, wait, wait, let's just meet Dr. Dujemi's part. I'll, I'll answer your question. Just one quick one. So, Dr. Dujemi, as you said, it yes, is not sir. sensing the ventricle. 
and has been rightly justified. First thing is first. He's pacing the ventricle, but he's not sensing the ventricle. Why? Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Look at this QRS, the first QRS you said. Yeah. Look at the in the time interval, the short interval between this normal intrinsic activity and the pace ventricle. Look at how short it is. Meaning that he did not consider this QRS at all. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. And he continue to pace the ventricle. But the next thing that you also emphasize is this that look at this intrinsic activity, and it's still paced almost on the intrinsic activity. Although you did not say a QRS, it simply means that it was in the absolute refractive period. That's why you did not say a QRS. You know, if you place okay. a ventricle on this refractory period, it will not generate a depolarization. Exactly. So it that was what happened. Started. It has not even, yes, because it has not even started repolarizing because this is the T wave. Mm. It has not even started repolarizing and you are placing it. That's why it did not generate a QRS. So that means that it's no sense, it's not regarding this guy at all. It's not regarding intrinsic activity. But is this good for the patient? And so there are instances, as I explained, why you use a VO. Mm. The patient is going to the theater and you are going to use electrical, oh. electro cutry, the atami machine that will be making the machine sense, will be making the pacemaker sense uh, electrical waves. That is not true. Then you convert the patient to VO. It's just for a short period for the space of the surgery or for a short period when he's doing an MRI. Mm. Then I'm just after you reprogram it back to normal thing. I, I, I still don't get why we need to do that in diatomy. Are you saying the diatomy can uh, be initiating contraction? The diatomy machine itself is, yes. you, you, you've seen it before. Uh, you yes, know that sir. you connect it to electrical activity. To a machine yeah. that is plugged, yeah. and that yeah. the electrical activity generated is what converts to a coagul a, uh, a coagulant to coag to coagulate bleeding or to cut. Is okay. that electrical activity? And that's why if you yeah. put it on, yeah. it will yeah. generate some sparking. If you notice, yeah. if you use it and you put it on uh, a scissors or something to generate yeah. some sparks, that's electrical yeah. activity yeah. generated. Okay. Okay. So, if that is used while the patient is on pacemaker, what will that be? be sensing. Ah, okay. You should be sensing now. Electrical activity is happening. Electrical activity is happening. Okay. You know that patient has gone into flat line, and uh, you'll be seeing ECG tracing. But uh, you, you just should be worried that patient's blood pressure is going down. Patient uh, S S P O is going down. What's happening? So John, uh, did you cut something? You know that he's a pacemaker <laughs> that is already silent. Okay. Okay. Doctor, okay, you have another question? Yes, sir. Yes, I I actually wanted to throw the line of would this kind of this mean generate someone to present a class population? Well. Yeah, that's the risk inside. Then yeah, that's the risk inside. That's why I said it's for a short period. And if you see a VT, oh. you shock the patient in the theater. That's why the study oh. is there. Okay, all right. That's the only thing that can save. It's better you save the patient by ensuring his pacing all the time than you assume he's pacing and he's dead. Okay, okay. Thank you. you get the difference. I get it. And if you see a VT, you just shock the patient end of story and they continue again their surgery. If I use the emergency surgery anyway. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, Dr. Duyemi, thank you for answering that question. So you can see thank the indication. Electrocutry, anything that will interfere with electrical activity. Okay, that's when you use a view. Okay. So, Dr. I, I'm not seeing anybody in the line, but who else can we call? We are all on now, you know, we are assisting here. Okay, please, man. So you can take this one. I just, uh, this is Dudu. I just, I no, just, not Dr. Dudu, you should not do that. Dr. Dudu, Dr. Dudu. Uh -huh. Ali, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Time is going. Now. Time is going. <laughs> Justify why 
what ECG tracing you are seeing and justify the mood. Okay, so this is um, a ventricular pacing. Yes, ma'am. And the first spike is this a pacemaker spike is seen on the QRS first one. Mm -hmm. So there are two QRS complexes that are paced, following which there is an intrinsic, um, what's it called, intrinsic activity. So there's a normal QRS there. But it still paces immediately after the um, intrinsic activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. And so it still paces immediately. Anywhere, just tell me. You can see my hair. Yes, what that's intrinsic activity. And this is intrinsic activity. You said it paced immediately after. No, I didn't say immediately after. I said it still paces afterwards, but there's a yes, after it. Yes, yes. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. So justify the mood. Then. So the um, ventricle is paced. Mm. And so we can find that. Then um, let's see. Ventricle is sensed as well. And please just give me a few minutes. So. The P, okay, there's something about this P. The first, uh, did I get it right? Okay, the first, uh, the first PR interval is quite prolonged before the next pacing. So it does not, you know. Okay, before the refractory, before the intrinsic activity. And then the next one after the intrinsic activity is closer to the QRS than the first one. I think I missed it up. So, so what I want us to just get is the coding. Can you put the coding in this thing first? Okay, the first one, the V is the ventricular pacing. Location. That's the V. The location of the pacing. Yes, the ventricle now. Okay. Uh, so chamber paste. Uh, yes. Paste. Next alphabet should be. Next alphabet should be. The next should be the one sensed. Yeah. So which one is sensed, and justify it. Mm. Okay. Um. Okay. Let me make a skip and come back to the first, the chamber paste is the ventricle, okay? And um, then what's it called? Chamber sense. The chamber sense is, okay. So there's a prolonged PR that after the first um, paste, um, QRS. Oh. I've missed it up. I've missed it up. Mm, no way. I don't want you to tell us which chamber, you know, the first alphabet is chamber paste. Second yeah. alphabet should be chamber sensed, right? Yes. Yeah. So which chamber is sensed? Well, from the lettering, it's the, it's the ventricle. But I no, no, don't do no, no. Look at the ECG. It on the ECG. The ECG. Don't, because you don't see letter when the patient brings ECG to you. It's only the tracing you see. So, okay, so look at this, right? You can see my aroma. Yes. Did you see a spacing spike here? No, that's the intrinsic activity. No. Yeah, so that means what, so what do you think will have happened? So it means that, um, was it called? Um, it was it inhibited pacing at the time of this intrinsic exactly that is it so that means it sensed this guy and did not bother to pace that's the response was inhibition yes. you get the doctor the boy yes mm, compared to this one compared to this one you can see my yeah. 
You can see the this one, right? Yes, I can. Has my slide moved? Yes, it has. So you see, you can see the you can see this activity, right? Yes, and you can, can see that it's spacing almost on this guy. That means that I did not regard this pacemaker no, I did not regard this intrinsic activity. Yes. So that's how to differentiate that this guy is not sensing because he did not regard this in his activity. Okay. You get it, man? Yes, I do. Thank you. Yeah. So that is why this second guy is the VV high. Sorry, my slide. Is not one of But I have a question. Where we are. Is he is moving now, right? It's not moving yet. Has it has moved? Been, no, not yet. I think I have to take it out. Yeah. Okay, you I missed can... your question. My question is this. Looking at uh, the VV high, the last two QR space contractions, the P wave are so close to the uh, uh, are so close to the um, contraction, the placing contraction. Is it because the uh, atrium is actually not sense? That's why the ventricle is just doing his own thing, as in at his own regular interval, he wants to come in and give his own contraction and move. But irrespective of how close or how far away the atrium is because the atrium is actually not the one sense. It's only the ventricle that is sense. That's it. <laughs> it doesn't regard the atrium. Okay. It does not regard for it because it's not sense. So, as I okay. said, if you are using a VVI mode, you are either pacing at a particular rate, irrespective of the rate of the atrium. Okay. So sometimes you can even see the sense Space, uh, sense uh, contraction coming inside the atrium. Yes, now that's why you can be pacing the you can pace atrium can be pacing at the same time you are pacing the ventricle. Wow, at the same time because you did not give regard for the atrium. That's the meaning. Okay. Okay. So is my slide showing you back? No, yeah, it's not showing. It's not showing. Yeah, it's showing well now. Yeah, you can see my hair. Yes, sir. So you can see the VVI. He, he has regards for this. That's why he did not pace around it at all. Okay. Right? The high is working. Like the, yeah, the high is working at this time. Yeah. He's in beating. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's clear, right? Yes, sir. So we can move on. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, so, um, Doctor Okopi. Okay, Doctor Okopi has gone to sleep. Doctor Blessed. Yes, sir. Yeah, so help us armor this one. <laughs> Justify it. Okay. Yeah, so from the um uh, am I awake or? from the symbol I uh, okay, okay, I've taken over. Go back to sleep. I'm awake. I didn't know I actually muted myself. <laughs> Okay, don't worry, let Dr. Bless her take it. Don't worry. Uh, yeah. Well, we can find one hard one. Before you do, wake you up later. <laughs> you have to justify you. You know, as I said, this CG machine, this CG tracing will come to you, but the mode will not be there. Yes. Let's um, say I turn back this in a trump, and then it's in between. So, and if this is because. Now, if we see that, look at the spike, the pacemaker spike, the wave that comes immediately after the pacemaker spike is actually 
an itral depolarization. So that means that um, when the pacemaker discharges, it's actually in the atrium. So it's located. So what it is sensing, so what it is pacing is the atrium. Mm -hmm. But after it paces, we see that it is what we get the T wave, not a KRS complex. So it is pacing the atrium. Then um, if we also notice in terms of the sensing, um, whenever there is a, we look at the ECG, we see that whenever there is an intrinsic atrial activity, right, the pacemaker goes silent. Whenever there is an intrinsic atrial activity. And then, so why is it not ventricle? We see that um, the last um, the last pacemaker fight on the ECG is occurring just shortly after a a uh, a, a, vent, a that looks like a PVC a ventricular contraction and the the pacemaker is not sensing is not regarding that contraction so. It means that um, it's not sensing ventricular depolarization, ventricular activity. So anytime there is um, an intrinsic atrial activity, it goes silent. And then the intrinsic atrial, uh, intrinsic atrial activity also produces a ventricular activity that is intrinsic too. I'm looking if there's any intrinsic ventricular activity that doesn't have an intrinsic ventricular activity, and I don't think that's okay. But there is one, the second to last um, pacemaker spike is actually yeah. after the pacemaker waits for, and after that QRS complex intrinsic, it waits, and the second to last one, it waits for a P wave, but there's no P wave, and then the pacemaker discharges. So we see a pacemaker spike then. Um, an induced T wave, right? Then the intrinsic activity picks over afterwards and makes the pacemaker go silent. Go silent. I think um, with this few point of mind, I've been able to justify the fact that it is. <laughs> I'm going to convince you, but not convince you. Hello, hello, sir. Sorry, sorry, please. I have um, a concern. The last electrical activity. Yes. What happened there? What happened? Yes, what's happening there? It has a premature. Yes. Because it seems that it's facing on, yes. on what looks like a T wave, not a not before a T wave. Yes, and. and in, it is it, it, it QRS, QRS, it is not broad. The abnormal I it's a QRS complex that is coming. That means that is coming before the atrial contraction. Because there's so it, the, the, the one preceding it was space. Then you see the P, the, you see the P wave, then the yeah. QRS complex, then you see the C wave. After that, then you see something that looks like a bizarre QRS complex. Then you see the mm. uh, person entering into that bizarre what's that? It means that the, pace, the, the pacemaker is not sensing ventricular activity. We know, but why is the ventricle coming at that level? Is can that I much come of it? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. So, so why is the pacemaker pacing the T wave of that PVC? No, if the pacemaker was sensing the ventricle, then it would have been quiet if it noticed that there was a ventricular um, 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 ventricular um, region. No, if the pacemaker was sensing the ventricle, it would have yes, been quiet. Been... But yeah. it's not sensing the ventricle. It's only it's sensing the atrium. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's sensing the atrium. It's not sensing the ventricle. Yes. It's not sensing the ventricle. It's based on the T wave. Okay, sorry, now let me now ask this question. If we go back to the first spike on this picture. Yes. Is it on, is it on a T wave? Yes, it's on a T wave. Okay. The first spike is, is on a T wave. Okay. Is it's that, no, it looks like a T. That looks like a T. 
Then you no, can I'll... see like you can see the P wave is entering the QRS complex. Okay. And this happened, let's, uh, looking at the first KRS complex, then the second one seems to be an intrinsic one, well conducted. Then, the, then after that, you, we can see that there's a T wave and the TP is like getting prolonged. Then the pacer came in and to pace it and then we have a P wave, then the KRS complex again. Then the T wave coming again. Then it's as if the TP is being prolonged, then it's, it's pacing again. So we have the P, but it's time to be corrected. I'm not too sure. Maybe the one, the upward after the pacing, after the pace, um, that line, it's a T or a P, or is the P that is very close to the KRS complex. That's a lot the major we need your help. Is it T? Is it T, right? Okay, so Doctor, thank you. First, Doctor Blessed, what did they want? They did wonderfully well. I'm so happy. <laughs> So, um, doctor, to come to the ans answer to the question, if it was a P wave or a T wave. Now, mm. I always remember an ECG lead. The waves look alike. Mm. Waves of the brothers look alike like the brothers. Waves of sisters look like alike as sisters. Mm? So, yes, I'll sir. ask you to do the so uh -huh. this, is a pace, this is a pace wave. I'm just telling you the name of the wave. Okay. Now okay. look at the many waves and tell me which one does it look like in the many waves. It looks like a T wave, sir. Okay. So you this you think is a T wave, right? It so look at this. This should be what? Mm -hmm. That's a T wave, sir. Okay. This should be what? T wave, sir. Okay. So look at this very well, though. Mm -hmm. Look at the distance, the duration. Hmm? Is it the same um, with this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. Yeah. Look at the height. Is it the same height with this? No, sir. It needs to. Okay. It's, like, it's like a baby sister, sir. Okay, just wait. <laughs> just wait. So <laughs> let's look at the duration. Two small boxes. Does it look like this duration? Hmm. Does it look like this height? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Look at this. Yeah. Does it look like this? Does it look like this height? Yes. Yeah. But we know so those exactly that like that. You said, man? I said those ones you are touching, they are the phase wave. Phase wave, yeah. yeah. Right? Uh -huh. That's the aim of the pace maker, no? Okay. But what of that other um, small... This deflection. Yeah. No, so it's just an electrical deflection. It's not a particular wave. Mm. Mm. It's just wow. an electrical deflection. It's not a particular wave. An electrical deflection is not a particular wave. Mm? Okay, sir. Okay. So as Dr. Blessed rightly said, you place the atrium. Mm. It sensed the atrium. Mm -hmm. It's placed the atrium. Let's yes, the atrium. Okay, so that yes, means yes, atrial piece, atrial sense, mm -hmm. and it also inhibited while yes, sensing, right? Yes, so it justifies a high. Now, yes, I'm sure your question was what was happening here, as Dr. Blessed yes, right? This is an abnormal QRS, right? And yes, if you compare the distance between here and here, and the distance between here and here, so it looks like this guy came before his time. Uh -huh. Right, so yes, that's this is less than two big boxes. Mm -hmm. It's the same between here and here. Yes, sir. This one big box, so between two big boxes coming, and even for the intrinsic one, gone, it's more than two big boxes. Yeah. So yeah. just uh, justifying that this guy is a premature guy. Mm. Okay, and as Doctor Blessed rightly said, the place you are pacing and sensing is atrium. You have no business with the ventricle, so that means whatever is happening in the ventricle, either it comes as premature oh, complex, so or does not come as premature complex, so does not have business. The, the lead does not have business with the ventricle. His own is that if atrial rate is delaying the yeah, pace, do you get it, man? Yes, sir. So that is why he looks as if he's pacing on the ventricle. Because atrial rate, his only business is atrial rate. So the distance between here and the time is paced. is already getting delayed for the next P wave. And that's why it's paced. So even if it was at the same time QRS was occurring, 
it is not his business because he's not sensing QRS. Okay, we can't see the slide again, sir. Hello? Okay, let me just call you back. Okay. I will put the slide. Am I still audible? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 you are. So I'm just trying to emphasize that I'll put up the slide again. I'm just trying to emphasize that the P, the lead in the atrium has no business with the ventricle because it's facing the atrium. Is as my slide come up? Yes. Sir. Yes. Because oh. it is. Uh, it's, off again. it's it's not seen again. Eh? Yeah. Yes, it's gone off again. I think it's my network. Just give me a minute. Let me adjust the place of the No picture. Um, yes, so let me share my screen. Doctor. Okay. All right. Hello? Am I still audible? Yes, sir. Yes, you are. Yeah, is the screen showing now? Yes, sir. Yes, it's yes, yes. yes. Okay. Now, is it showing again? Is it showing the slideshow? Yes, sir. Yes, it's still showing. Okay, thank you, sir. So I'm just trying to emphasize here that, you know, you always set the time interval for your pacing, meaning that this guy paced because when he didn't sense P wave activity, uh, HL activity, then it has to pace, right? Yes, There's also a time interval that's already set that if it does not sense, or if it senses activity, then it should not pace. And that's what happened here. This guy came at the expected time that was already programmed on the machine, on the battery. Okay. Yes, sir. Up my slide is still showing. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now, by the time you are waiting for the next P with the lead was waiting for the next HL activity. You didn't sense any activity. That's why it had to pace. Okay. Now, after that, it also had to wait. For intrinsic activity, if it's not sensing it, then it will pace again. Okay. I will follow you. Yes, yes. So it's also after pacing again, it will wait again. Since it did not sense any intrinsic activity, even though VPC occurred, it does not mean that P wave activity happened. That is why it had to pace again. So it's already timed. And that's why if you Count the number of big boxes between each paste. So let's count this one. One, two, three, four. Then the next one, two. One, two, three, four. So it's around that set time it will paste if it does not sense activity. 
So even though VPC is occurring, his duty is not to monitor ventricle. His duty is to monitor atrium. So if he's not sensing atrial activity at the timed interval, it will pace again, even though he's pacing on top of when VPC is occurring. Are we getting it, Dr. Spiel? Yes, yes. yes, sir. yes sir. So that's yes. what is happening here. So you are, is the pacemaker is not bothered that the VPC is occurring and is pacing on the VPC. No, he's not sensing the ventricle. His duty is to face the atrium. So if he does not sense atrial activity, which will pace. Yes. But, okay, but the last, hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, thank you. But the last uh, uh, paste bit was not uh, transmitted to the ventricle it because... It was transmitted because it was... Uh, it was not transmitted to the ventricle because, because, yes, because ventricle had just uh, had this normal is in the refractory period. Refractory period. Refractory period. Okay. period. Thank you. Okay, that's what happened there. So, um, Dr. Kopi has not spoken Let's find one add one for Dr. Kopi. Dr. Kopi. Hello, Dr. Kopi. He has gone to sleep again. Hello? He's coming. Please give him time. <laughs> now, I want to be sure he's, what should you say? <laughs> he's there. Yeah, I don't think he's there in us. I'm sure he will have spoken. Uh... Dr. Hugo. Dr. Caroline. Nobody's answering us again. Okay. Dr. Godia. Dr. Kopi is talking. Oh. But I'm, are you Sorry, I, was, I was having um I, I'm back. Yeah, so help us neutralize this one. <laughs> Interesting. Anyways, it's more of um, a dual chamber pacing because first from the ECG, you could see there's pacing both the ventricular uh, chamber trim, and at the same time, it is also sensing activities because when it found activity both from the atrium and the ventricle, it did nothing. And um, also, if there is no activity, it actually triggers one, and if there is, it's a, so if you follow through the tracing, you see it. And from the tracing, I think that's all. I don't know, I'm yes. done, sir. I have okay. a question. Yes, madam. My question is this. Uh, you can see that the first QRS complex seems to be in twisted form. Then there was a P wave, then a, a pacing of the ventricle. Then we can see a pacing of the. Then it, after the pacing of the ventricle, then there was just a long thing. Then the atrium had to be paced again. Now, my question is this then the ventricle is also paced again. Pacing the atrium here, won't it by itself be an AV conjunction? Why is it that the ventricle, why, why is it that this pacing, this atrial pacing in the one, two, three, the third one, the third, uh, the second spike, or the first atrial pacing, why is it not being conducted down? Why do we have to pace the ventricle here again? Even before we are too sure that it's uh, prolonged or the ventricle is not coming by itself, why do we have to face again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so yeah, your question is clear. So the most important thing is that this patient has an AV node problem aside from AC node problem. Okay. So that's why I said when we give a trial lead only to a patient, just telling patient that very soon is going to need a particular lead. Because whatever has damaged the SC node will soon damage the AV node. So that's what's playing off here. This patient has a problem with both the SC node and the AV node. And that's why you need to pace the atrium and also pace the ventricle. 
So it pays the atrium in that atrial pacing. I'm sure you will find to this third cardiac side. Yes, sir. It pays the atrium, but you were not, there was no AV conduction. So if there's no AV conduction, I told you all this thing is timed. You will have the programmer, the person doing the program will have timed the PR interval. That after 200 milliseconds, so if you don't say, face the ventricle. So that's what it will have waited for. If it had waited and didn't, based on the timing that you have programmed. Okay. And it didn't happen, then it's going to face it. Okay. Okay. Like the okay. 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 Like, okay. That is like this a question. One. Yeah. So it now yes, pays the atrium when the yeah. intensive ventricular activity is inhibited. So you see the smoke here is coming. Yeah. It now sends both atrial and ventricular uh, activity. Yes. So yeah, it pays the atrium again because it had waited it for. Coming. There's a time program time interval between here and here. So if that time programmed elapsed, it has to pace. Okay, the time program yeah. between here and here did not elapse, so it sends this guy. So that's why this place the ventricle. So it inhibited. Yeah, it inhibited mm. exactly. They have an intrinsic one. At yes, and the time between and here it. and here did not elapse, so and it sends this, so it didn't bother pacing. Yeah. And also, it didn't bother pacing the ventricles. Because the ventricles came but, out. Exactly. But the time between here and here elapsed. So it had to pace. Okay. And the time between here and here also elapsed. So it had to pace. Okay. That's right. Mm. Thank you. Yes, madam. This is Dr. Julius. Um, ah, Dr. Julius, I yes. How do we see the on the, on the third alphabet? How do we appreciate a triggered activity with ECG like this? Okay, good. <laughs> Don't worry yourself. As I said, technically, yeah, let me tell you, technically, that trigger activity is an unnecessary word. When you see it with the figure, it's not a necessary word. In fact, you won't even see it on the coding. You get it. You'll not see it on the coding. And I'll tell you why. As I said, the trigger activity means space, right? Yeah. Let me yes, show you this. And so I'll show you this to see you. So you tell me what you think between the difference. So yeah, the third alphabet means D. That means inhibit and trigger, right? Yes. So if you look at this ECG very well, these guys, so from the first, I'm sure it has sensed this. That's why it didn't space, right? So it inhibited. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. At this place, it didn't sense any activity, so that's why it pissed, right? Yes. Same thing. Yeah. So that means trigger up on the air, triggered up on the air, right? Yes. Triggered up on in this one also. Yeah. But in bit up on the air, in bit up on the air. In fact, in bit also up on the air because this is a VPC. That's why it didn't piss. Right? So you will have said he has the door, right? All right. Yes. <clears throat> yes. So that means the door has incorporated in bit and trigger together. You yeah. get. Yeah. I'll show you something now. I'll show you something now. So let's look for the let me let me use another VDI so that you will get it again. So can you see this now? Trigger that point here, right? Because it's in notice, are you? Yeah. Yes. Triggered up on there, right? You didn't notice, right? Okay. It didn't, that's why I paste, right? It noticed there. It inhibited, right? Oh. Then triggered up on there, right? Yes. Triggered up on there. So the question yeah. is, why didn't they call it a VVD? <laughs> because it triggered and it paste. Are you getting okay. it? Yeah. So just trying to emphasize the essence that a D, so a T, is not actually necessary because even we say it in a bit, it means that it also has ability to trigger. Okay. You get so that's why you never see a VVT or A T. Yeah. Are you that's getting it? My screen yeah. is blank. 
Sorry about network. I have to see these network providers. So I also yeah. have a question. The um for the dual one, how how did we explain the um, inhibition and triggering? That's the third one, the D. Yeah. Is my screen back up? Yes, I'm please. answer your question. It's back up. Yeah, it is. It yes, is. Uh... So I'm just trying to emphasize something here that anytime you see a B B I or A H I, I I, the high just means that you should be able to inhibit, meaning that it has a trigger component inside it. Mm -hmm. Right. Are you getting it? But yeah. as a possibility of inhibit. Unlike a VO, VVO, that one is not going to, it, only thing it's doing is just trigger, trigger and trigger. It does not mean it. You get it? Yeah. Now, the D you asked about, how did you mention VVID? Anytime they use a D, mm -hmm. are you getting it, man? Yes, I am. Sir. The initial middle alphabet, or the second alphabet will also be a D. Okay. Now, so what it simply means eh, is that remember this middle D means it sends both atrium and ventricle. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what it's trying to tell you is that the second D, that's why you don't see a VDI. So the second D simply means that it's going to be able to trigger and repeat at the same time, which will which looks like a VVI, I. right? Mm -hmm. But the difference, yeah. what differentiates the VVI from a VDD is that it, the VDD has the ability to also sense the atrium and track the oh. atrium. Okay. okay. So that is why you will never see a VVD. It should be able okay. to, the moment you see a D at the third alphabet, then the middle alphabet should also be a D. Okay. So you will never see an AHD. You only see an AH high. If you're going to see a D, then it has to be actually ADD. But there's actually no ADD because there's no one who sends the, uh, sends the ventricle and replacing the atrium. But usually used for the V, is the V basically they use it for. Or a DDD. D. Anytime you are seeing a third D, that means that the middle D has to be poor. Okay. That's how it is coded. So what I'll do is that when I get to the uh, programmer machine, um, I will snap the full programming code for Medtronic is on the machine, the full programming code. You will see all the combinations for exam okay. purpose. Okay, I think we've talked about temporary pacemaker. Uh, um, we are done with um, all the codings, the extension of the coding, the clear cut. Just uh, when we are treating yes. the to decipher yes. this. So we have talked about temporary pacemaker leads. We've talked about um, transcutaneous, that means um, surface pacing. The, the, the pacemaker lead, when you are inserting the lead, you can insert a lead into the atrium for the temporary pacemaker. Either the atrium or the ventricle. So you call it transvenous. You can also put it on the epicardium. This is done by the cardiac surgeons when they do an open heart surgery and they want to put a lead. They don't want to put a transvenous lead to avoid infection and all that. They don't want to put it on the surface of the heart. So you can do your epicardial Lead. That means it will be go through, it will be percutaneous, but it will be touching the epicardium. So it should look like, like a needle. I'm sorry, Dr. Tony, you have seen Dr. Samusi do, do something. Yeah. So, yeah, so it will be like a needle that will pass through the skin, touching the epicardium. It's also used for pacing and easy to remove. You just remove it through the skin. So that one, you don't have to do transvenous to avoid the infection. You know, they just put the patch, they just take the valve, 
So you don't want the to pericarditis. So you don't want to be putting a transvenous lead into the atrium or where you just put a patch on your valve. So these are some indication why you do a pericardial lead. We've talked about transcutaneous. I've not seen transcutaneous before, but you said it exists. Well, I've seen the other three. So I think that is, I think that's basically everything about, we've talked about this metronic, this mechanic, and all the software uh, components. Thank you so much. I think that's the main thing. I will need this slide. Yeah, after, I'll put the slide on the screen. Um, the other things we didn't discuss, maybe next time, because of time, is sensing, over sensing, capturing. But I just need us to understand the coding for exam. We need to understand that yes. coding and solve the other. Thank you so much. So that's what we to capture. I think we can look at yeah. other terms. Then we'll talk about EP also. Okay, Chief. So when are we talking about this one? Yeah, this, oh, this one. We need to fix, uh, 